Ray, this looks an awful lot like a 705, but uh, no, that's the wrong frequency. Yeah, that's true, George. That is the wrong frequency, and while it does look a lot like a 705, it's a completely different animal in its own. They used, th this is what we call the SHF project, super high frequency, uh, 2.4, 5.9 gigahertz. Not megahertz, but gigahertz. So we're in the microwave bands now. And what other better form factor than the 705 to go with, use a lot of the similar components, but one of the biggest differences is the side. Uh, yeah, there's a, I don't see an antenna connector here. No, sir, not an antenna connector, and then you've got lights flashing like a network. Yeah, exactly. So what we're doing here is PoE up to the RF deck that will be by the antenna. And so that way, no feed line loss, which you, you really couldn't stand on the microwave frequencies. No, sir, not at all. And this, this is definitely a prototype. A lot of bells, I mean, a lot of buttons, a lot of different things that you would think that you could look at, but a lot of it's not functioning. But we wanted to be able to show it here at Dayton because there, there's a lot of microwave enthusiasts here. Um, they're using the 705 for like the IF or 10 gig or their other transverters. But this is this is the first serious look at a manufacturer doing something to to go along in their radio product line. And this looks like I mean the build quality and all feels like. A commercialized product, uh, not not an amateur radio product. This this is very heavy looking, like something something we would use in broadcasting. Okay, slips out of mount. Let me see. Oh yeah, it's got some health to it. Yeah, and I mean, it's it's a beautiful layout like it is. GPS antenna for the clock configuration. And then your RF connections on it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, how many watts? That that hasn't been specified yet, but we got. I mean, you, you can even hear the crowd's going wild. Yeah. I, think, I think you've got the first customer there. Yeah. Yep. But unfortunately, George, we don't have a whole lot of information at this point on it. Uh, we do have a preliminary brochure that definitely take a look at. But it, it is exciting to, to see new technology coming out. And I can tell this is not a mock-up. This thing has heat to it. So I know there's something happening in this box. It's, uh, huh. Well, that, that's going to be a fun product to watch there because we've got those frequencies up there. We need to be using them before the FCC decides to sell them to the cell phone people or someone else. Yes, sir. And one of the things that's, that I find exciting about this is, yes, there are people that are building it. Will the specs m meet or exceed what some of the, the um, high-end guys that are doing that are building their own preamps and LNAs and things like that? It'll give them a run for the money, but it's going to be a package that somebody can take out of the box and know that it works instead of the frustration of, eh, some might think it's frustration. Some might think that it's pure ecstasy that, oh, my gosh, I'm troubleshooting and building my own stuff. But this brings it to mainstream ham radio here. Well, as a former uh, television engineer, the fact that you don't have to deal with waveguide and pressurized line and all of these things we did back during that time, you've just got... Uh, Ethernet up to it is really going to simplify things. Taking all of that and line loss out of the equation, all those places that you could get water in, and it doesn't take breathe on it, you know, on, on something like that, and it can't tolerate the loss. But here, I mean, if that's up on the tower or building wherever you're going to put it, short links to your antennas. Very, very nice setup. And do we know what modes this is going to do yet? All the traditional modes, or there, I guess maybe some data modes in here, huh? 
It'll be interesting to see what it will do. Some of the preliminary discussions that I've heard is definitely including D-Star, but also the DD mode. So 128K bit per second, maybe a little bit faster, not really sure. I'm, I'm excited to see what the final thing is, but I could tell when you were talking and you're looking and you're, you're kind of pulling back that drool, the wheels are turning in your head going, I, I bet this is on one of your Christmas lists. Well, you know, I got to think these frequencies, there, there's some bandwidth in here. There's opportunity to really, really get some transmissions out that are, that are not narrowband, sideband, or, or FM. That, there's some capabilities. And I think it was this part of the spectrum that excited you to get you your license at one time. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I liked getting up in the, the higher end of the band because I, I have worked in 950. That's what we use for uh, the radio stations as a studio to transmit our link. And we've got some pretty good bandwidth there. We can send uh, quite a bit more than just uh, analog signal on it. But, yeah, you know, I didn't really have any interest in HF to start with, although I, I enjoy it now. But... Yeah, getting up in here where you can experiment, where you can send some real data, that uh, kind of piques my interest. I can just, I can tell by the way you're talking about it, George, the wheels are just spinning, man. That, that's great. And I remember you, well, your story that it was really VHF, UHF that got you excited about amateur radio. So now there, there's this and more now. Yeah. I mean... Uh, well, I hate to speculate because we don't know what this thing is going to do. But I know the frequencies you got here, uh, there's, there's stuff we haven't really even dreamed of yet that's going to be possible. Yep, at this point, we, we don't know. Well, Ray, thanks for showing us these two new products here. <laughs>